welcome everybody to the HRI Syndicate Sharing the Love webinar, where we'll talk a little bit more about sharing ownership with different people and how different owners have enjoyed shared success together and whether that can make your, your success even more enjoyable. And we have three really great panelists for you this evening. We have John Muldoon, who's a former rugby player and is very involved with family and friends. And then we have Jack Cantillon and Tamza Doyle, who are equally very involved in very successful syndicates, which is which is apt because Jack has had a very good day. And Jack, I think we'll we'll start with you on the the news with topic of of just before we were recording this that you've had a, a big success and, and tell us a little bit. I know you weren't there to enjoy it today, but a little bit of of what's happened today for you. Yeah, well, I wasn't there to enjoy it today, but I definitely did enjoy it today. Uh, watching it on, on video it was great fun to win them. Uh, Kerry National at the Stoll. Um, it, it, the kind of journey started with Cabaret Queen um, at the Lestol Festival this, uh, this time last year when she was second and since then we, she won the Munster National and was third in the Galway Plate and today was the wonderful result winning the Kerry National. So an amazing uh, mayor. When we syndicated her, it was €210 Euro for 1% um, and all those owners have had a remarkable journey since then. Um, so it was a really great and a testament to Willie and to Paul and Patrick and the whole team uh, that we uh, managed to win today. It must help a lot to when you have successes like that. You must have inquiries almost instantaneous for, from people to, to be involved in, in your next syndicate or, or in the, the one that, that's had the success. Yeah, no, absolutely. I watch my phone and go ping, ping, ping after any of these wins. Uh, and, uh, you know, you just, you know, people just want to be involved. I want to be involved at an affordable level. And that's what syndicates can do. And I know two guys will talk about that too. You know, it's a, it's a remarkable thing when you come together with other people and you actually can, it's, Horse racing is a unique sport in that you can be a principal actor as an owner um, by investing a few quid um, and you can have no uh, uh, athletic talent whatsoever. So uh, for me, uh, that's definitely something I, I, I like about our great game because I, I did not share John's talent um, uh, uh, whatsoever on the rugby field, but I, I still kind of have a bit of fun when it comes to horse racing. And John, co coming to you, you, you've shared a book more with your, your family mostly. And, and how have you felt? Does that bring you together closer as a family and let you enjoy those moments a little bit more? Yeah, I think so. It's just, a, it's obviously something to look forward to in the family and um, gets the WhatsApp group going. Um, generally, when they lose, they get, it gets going even more. But um, yeah, look, I think about 10 years ago, uh, my dad hadn't had a horse for uh, quite a while and um, I said it to him one day going, oh, um, are you going to invest in a horse soon? And um, my mum rang me one night to tell me that, um, that there was a, a horse arrived into the yard one evening after the, the national hunt sales, the uh, yearling sales. So um, that was kind of where it started. And um, we, we found ourselves on the flat for the last couple of years just through a little bit of kind of luck, I think. And it's... Um, it's turned out uh, to be quite successful in the last few years. We've had a couple of nice uh, horses and it, more so it's just the fun of it and just the anticipation going up, seeing a horse working in the morning and just enjoying it and then getting on race day, which obviously has been difficult over the last while. But um, yeah, it's just the fun of everything, isn't it? And the, the, the hope and expectation that there might be something special starting at the start of the year. How many horses roughly would you have at any given time now? Um, I'm involved in four at the moment, um, so just again, it, it's uh, it's probably not at a syndicate level, but it's just being part of um, a group of people, and there's different people involved in all the horses. But it's it's just to have a bit of fun, really. Um, it's having fun. Like, don't get me wrong, lots of people own horses outright, and I'm sure they get a, a huge buzz and enjoyment out. But when there's a couple of you involved in it. You can be sending texts over and back, talking about it, going in the morning. It, it just gives that a little bit more kind of um, feeling to it. And obviously, when you go on the day and you have friends there coming with you who may or may not be part of it, it, it adds to that um, excitement levels. And um, it, it's always good fun, um, that anticipation. I'm sure Jack had it today, that, that excitement in the belly just before the off. And um, I'm sure jumping the last, there was a bit of roaring at the TV to keep going. So, yeah, it's good. And you've obviously had a lot of success on the on the rugby pitch. How does it compare? Because that's shared success with the team. How does it compare with when you have success on the race course with your family all, all part of it too? I actually find this, um, I get butterflies more from um, setting there because 
like Jack said, it's the opposite. You have absolutely no um, effect or outcome on it. So it's actually harder. Um, so he, those butterflies tend to come a little bit earlier. Obviously, when you're playing, you, you can have some effect on what's happening. So it's uh, you're kind of passing over the book to somebody else and um, hoping that they'll do the best for you and how it it pans out is not in your hands. So it's a weird feeling, but it also a very exciting feeling. Um, obviously, you when you're involved in it yourself, you, you can relax and you can do your little mental prep and do all that. But for that, you just have to rely on someone else and hope that they're doing theirs. <laughs> and Damza, we, we've heard from, from John how he got involved through his family. And obviously your family are, are very involved in, in racing in general, but how have you got involved in the, in the shared ownership side? I'm in a couple of ladies syndicates that have been brilliantly successful. I'm with Act the Wag with four, with three other friends. And then in It's All About the Girls. And those two syndicates, I suppose, over the last, well, for Act the Wag, maybe it's four or five years. We started with Clondra Warrior, um, a relatively inexpensive horse has picked up. And we were lucky enough to squeeze him into Willie Mullins's. And he just surpassed all expectations and won on the flat, won the National Hunt. He... Um, yeah, he won the November handicap in, which was a big surprise in Leopardstown, and none of us were there, which was absolutely awful. And then, but he went on to win in Royal Ascot. And I mean, for us on the Tuesday of Royal Ascot, four of us, four girls and their husbands were all there, was just like probably the most magical day. Um, and Tuesday is always the day that we like to go and we have all the friends picnics. And like, I suppose that was the ultimate sharing the love day because um, Chanel always has this wonderful picnic and we always go and there's a whole bunch of picnics all around the same area. So once the horse won, like, obviously we all went crazy. We were extremely on Royal Ascot. Um, there were hats flying, we were roaring and screaming. We had no expectation that he, we didn't really think that he would win. We just thought he'd have, we'd have a great day out and they gave us a nice lunch and everything was gorgeous. And the next thing when he just took off and won with right and right, unbelievable. It was just to lead in a Royal Ascot winner was awesome. And then the picnic, we were the last people to leave the picnic. It was a proper, proper day out with everybody and everybody kind of, I think, felt it for us because I suppose we were, you know, just four ordinary people really with, with a horse like that. And not really, it wasn't surpassed, but the Galway hurdle then for him to go on and win that was just, you know, he was, a, he was, was he favourite? Ruby had never won the Galway hurdle and he, he was right up there, you know, with the expectation on his shoulders. So we did have, as John was saying, the butterflies that day, you had much more nerves, you know, and you were, it was, you know, I suppose, yeah, the level of expectation was big, but then for him to win the Galway hurdle, like, was just, <laughs> that was another whopper. That's his, the trophy that we got, which was, and we get to keep it, which is amazing. We had to toss for it. Um, and I lost the toss. <laughs> I was devastated because, I mean, when am I ever going to get a trophy like that ever in my life? And certainly not from any uh, sporting prowess, like... Uh, I can assure you. Um, so we leave that to John. So I, we lost the toss. The following year we went back and I had we had this great trophy and we got to share it for, you know, the few months each and it was brilliant. Pride of place and on all our countertops. Anyway, then we went to do the toss um, the following year and I just, you know, I was like, power of positivity. This is my trophy. Like I will keep this forever. And um, I lost the toss. So I had to apparently, I, I, did, I thought I did a great, oh my God, Anya, I'm so pleased for you. But um, I, I clearly wasn't and um, anyway for my 40th the whole bunch of them got together and they got me a replica so I love it. Oh. And, yeah amazing like on my birthday night they all arrived in and I don't know like a lot a good lot of people very kindly clubbed together and got that trophy and it's like you know it's so special anyway so that's Sharon Love and then it's all about the girls um, is uh, our horses with Jesse Harrington Legs Lawler organizes that and Patrick Cooper buys and there's about 30 of us, I think, in that. So that's um, roughly, you know, it's, it's, a, it's affordable to get involved and you don't pay any more. We've been really lucky because we've sold horses and they've had winners. I led in a winner at the Curra again. I've been outrageously lucky, basically, in the last number of years um, with it. So, and the crack, you know, the parties, the crack, the fun, the celebrations afterwards, the WhatsApp groups. Yeah, it's really great. I think everybody gets a bit of a kick out of it and enjoys it. And we are very unseen. There's a lot of shrieking and screaming and all that. And that's all part of the crack. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. And Jack, we've been talking about you roaring and screaming as well. But 
the, the way that you're involved is that you you tend to you're rather than times who's participating in the syndicates you're actually running them and none of us are quite sure how you find the time to do everything as well as your official job i don't think you sleep at night but can you can you tell us a little bit about your involvement and and your role in the syndicates um side of things yeah well i, I just felt that um for a lot of my friends of uh, of my vintage, they, you know, they didn't want, they, and they, they couldn't put in, you know, two, three grand and a horse, you know, that just isn't something uh, accessible to them. So I just felt there is an opportunity if you get enough people and, and generate enough buzz to, to say, look, if you put two or 300 euro in, you actually can be involved in, in, in the game of uh, horse racing. So we just, that's what we do. We divide every horse into a hundred units. Um, and uh, as a result of that, it becomes a little bit more affordable. It might, you know, of course, there's things that, you know, you lose from that. You, you may not get a ticket, but quite, uh, quite uh, often in normal times, you will, to be honest. Um, and you might lose a little bit of the control. You can't really ring Willie Mullins and tell him, I want to run in this race. But, you know, that's what sole ownership is about. So it's all about having different levels of, of um, control. And I think uh, 100 units has been a good balance in terms of providing affordability, but still maintaining the crack that John and... Uh, Tamsa have talked so much about. And do you find that being involved in syndicates has then led to people taking full ownership in, in horses once they've had a taste for it? Yeah, definitely. I, I found out a good bit that a lot of people would text me and say, look, I'd like to buy a mare this year. I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that. As you alluded to, I don't have enough time sometimes to do uh, all the requests that we get. Uh, but we're, you know, we're certainly going to give a go. We're going to do some exciting stuff hopefully later in the year. But uh, yeah, like that's what's addictive. That's what's amazing about this game. It's addictive. So if you just get that little little smidgen, uh, you know, you'll you'll be in it for life. And I think uh, that's what a great thing about having a gateway drug like a small little syndicate like ours is um, all about. I want to touch on one thing because it's not all a, a money making machine for you. You're not all in it to try and, and fleece all these people. But <laughs> but also what you did with the rip, with rippling waters and the and the syndicate last year. I, I'd love you to just, to just explain a little bit about how you use that the way of bringing yeah. people together in a syndicate in racing, but for the good of others. Yeah, that was brilliant, um, sally -Ann. That was, uh, uh, so we just, uh, and uh, the testament really goes to Tracy Collins on this. You know, she put her hand up and she said, I would train a horse for free. And what we said is we would claim a horse out of the five grand claimer in um, Laytown. So the way that works, the five grand claimer, you can buy any horse in that race. You can put your hand up and say, I'll give five grand for that horse. Now, multiple horses might be claimed. So we were very lucky that the horse we went to claim, no one else claimed it. The people we claimed it off donated back the five grand that we claimed it for. Um, and then we uh, raced the horse. Um, she came second, ran quite well, but she also happened to have a nice pedigree, um, which uh, was brilliant because when she came to um, the breeding stock sales, she sold very well. And all and McDonough, who very kindly bought her for some clients, um, all between the jigs and the reels, we raised 36,000 for... Um, the Cancer Trials Ireland Fund, which was just a brilliant thing. And all it was, was, you know, people throwing in a hundred euro to take a share in this horse. Um, so that, you know, it, it could be a force for real good um, resource ownership. Um, and that was a particularly lucky um, filly last year. Well, she deserved to be lucky for, for such a good cause. It would have been a terrible shame if she hadn't turned out to be lucky for, for yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. And, and John, have you found, we're talking with, with Jack there about um, him bringing, you know, people then f taking full ownership. Have you found that your family, the members who weren't maybe involved in racing before, have become more interested in it now through, through your ownership? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, we're involved with some family and friends as well. So it's kind of a mix of everything. But it's brought, obviously, the, the friendship even tighter. And then it's it's brought in maybe the members of the family that weren't that really into racing. Um, it's brought them to back into racing, I suppose you would say. And it's probably brought our wider family, not necessarily our, our close family, um, our unit, but it's probably brought some of our cousins and that who um, were involved in racing a few years ago um, to bring them back into it and to, I suppose, uh, mentally reinvest into it is um, probably the main thing. But no, it's... Um, as I said, it's it's what Jack is doing is is huge for a lot of people who can't afford it, and um, we're probably a little bit different, but it's still it's the enjoyment factor out of it, and it's it's uh, it certainly provided a lot of entertainment 
around our kitchen table and just as I said earlier around um, mainly when they lose <laughs> it's uh, it probably adds more to uh, the whatsapp group goes more when they lose than when they win so it's uh, it's always the same way isn't it <laughs> WhatsApp has, has a lot to answer for, especially at the moment with the pandemic. But do you, do you think that um, it provides a, an occasion to bring your family together that maybe you, you know, it gives you an excuse to come together that maybe you wouldn't have and, and gives you an excuse to, to come home to Ireland? You know, I know you're based in the UK now, but gives you an excuse to come home a bit more often. Yeah, it does. Um, I flew home in, uh, in a, early February um, when I was obviously, I'm based over here in the UK now, I'm in Bristol and I flew home to meet my dad, meet uh, Finn Barcal, who's involved in all the horses with us and usually they run, they run in his colours, but um, Finn Bar has obviously been a very lucky owner. He's the only uh, the only man to win at Galway Hurdle twice, so uh, you have a bit of work to do. So he won it back to back um, in uh, the early 80s, so he's been a very lucky owner and obviously very good friends with Noel, uh, Noel Mead, who we have our horses with, but um yeah it, it, it's a good excuse to come home and flew home uh, for a night and went to the bar and like everything we hatched all our dreams and plans and the dreams were still alive at that stage so it was uh it was a great night and probably um obviously i, I wasn't banking on COVID happening but uh it was um it was good to get home and to see everyone and it was uh i hadn't seen the horses since they were bought at the sales so it was great to see how they'd um progress and just sitting there and comparing photos and just doing all that is the fun of it isn't it when you um when you're buying young horses and they're they're starting to mature a little bit and um it was finally nice to see them and uh, as you can imagine over a few points it gets even better so um that was that was a uh, that was good fun in february and um but yeah it was uh, obviously i wasn't expecting to be home for so long when covid happened so yeah look it, it is what it is but it certainly um it, it provides an excuse to ring home and to to contact some of the family as well so do you also think it provides a, a distraction from the from the stress that i know that like the the rugby rope world is fairly centered as well but does it provide a kind of outlet for you to to get away from all of that that's the main thing for me it, it, that's the that's the big plus of it it just provides me with something else to um obviously i'm coaching now so it, it's probably i'm even more uh, I put in more hours than I did when I was a player. You've you've a lot of downtime as a player, but for me, it's just come home, um, chill out, throw on, throw on the TV, watch a race or two. But to have a horse and to look forward to, I'm I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to. Um, I like to look forward to the um, and try and preempt what our trainer is going to do, and I like to have a look at some of the races and just think, oh, I wonder what we're running that, and just cross around the form and stuff. So to me, it's probably. Um, as my wife would say, it's becoming more of an obsession now than it is fun. So um, I have to uh, I have to divide my time out properly. But uh, no, look, I enjoy it, and it's um, it's definitely a huge outlet for me, and it, it it allows me to just relax and just sit back. And um, it was a bit of a, a blow to hear that, um, especially over here, that there might be no crowds for six months. I was when I heard it, I was trying to count. I was like. November, or October, November, December, January, February, March. I was like, does that include Cheltenham or exclude Cheltenham? Uh, so <laughs> that was my main concern when I heard that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I think we were, we were all concerned when we heard that news. But, but you know, Jack, we're talking about um, division of time, which obviously is something that, that you know uh, a lot about. And, and you've also, the whole idea of getting the different syndicates based around different ideas and different groups, you know, people that have common interests, like there is a rugby and racing syndicate. I know you're part of like the Trinity college alumni and, and how will people go about if they have a common, if you were to give advice to people who have a common interest and they're trying to get a group of friends together, how would you advise them to, to go about it? Well, I think, I think, you know, that the HRI ownership department does a remarkable job. I think they're great. I know um, Amber, and Aidan would be delighted to answer any questions that they have. And that's the first port of call. You should, you should reach out to them, let them know you're interested. Um, and then I, would, I think you should uh, look for a trusted bloodstock agent or someone that can guide you through the, the world of the sales. Um, and then you should uh, you know, see, I'm sure your sister would, would happily help out sally Ann if she was uh, 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 duly asked. Um, but you know, th there is loads of people there that would lo love to be part of, uh, of helping you and navigating this great sport because it's there, it's available to you and um, it's totally accessible. 
And Tamzo, you've grown up in racing, as we as we touch on. You're involved with your husband. You know, you're very involved professionally. It's it's your whole lifestyle. So, what made you think to go and do it with a group and do it separate that way, rather than just owning the horses that you already have um, through your business? Yes, true. We would have plenty of horses in training over the years. Maybe it could have been a yearling that we didn't sell and we put in training, or a filly we wanted to keep. Um, date my husband's family would have had quite a few horses in training. They were very lucky with Cheltenham winners and um, from very few horses, actually. Um, always struck it quite lucky and loved the national hunt. So I've sort of seen all the different aspects of ownership, you know, single ownership, partnerships, um, and I, the syndicate. I, and, we, you know, I was back, back in the heyday, in the good old days, and you saw these amazing syndicates of builders, and, you know, they all had, and it just looked like a lot of fun. Anyway, when it just happened, we said, right, we're four busy mums in the run, and the husbands actually were the ones that went for the pint together, and they said, why don't we just give it a go, and we'll get the girls a syndicate. So that's it. That really started from that. Um, that's the Act the Wag syndicate. So myself, Gillian Walsh, uh, Onya Casey, and Ashling Gannon are together on that. And that has been amazing. I love that of four people. I think that's been a, a really great because technically I know you have to pay more to get in, but you know, well, we've had dividends. We've been really lucky and there's been kitchen improvements and Jimmy Choo shoes and stuff that we never would have done at all if this horse hadn't. And we're just like, it is, we are so poxy. I realize not all, not every, not every horse is like the ones we've just had those. Um, we've replaced Honda Warrior because obviously we sold him and with um, another horse in Willie's called Aiton Bob. And he's, you know, he's won a couple of nice races for us as well. But the, um, the big syndicate that with all about the girls, um, actually Jack's mom, Mita, is in that syndicate with me too. And I love that as well. We don't all know each other. We, I know quite a few, quite a few good friends are in it. Actually, Amber is in it and Caroline Fitzpatrick and a few pals, Lorna Fowler. And then there's ladies that we don't know, people who are all across the world. They all have the shared love of racing and the fun and, you know, going to Champion Stakes Day together. And that has been great because, again, it is a less, less of an outlay. So your chances are you're not going to make really much out of it. But in the same instance, you can have a lot of fun. And the Zoom calls, so we Zoom each other when the horses run. And that's always, you know, it's great crack. We're all watching the races on part of the Zoom call as well. And that's been a good way of doing it during these times. Um, so how would I divide them up? I don't know. I suppose I've enjoyed them. You know, I've enjoyed them all. But I, it definitely that the, the shared, you know, when you do win a race, and again, we've been very lucky as, as single owners to won some really nice races. You are leading in. Your, but I think the share, like I, the crack of the shared thing, and as you know, the texting before, and you know, you can, sh you, you know, you're genuinely sharing all of that. Whereas otherwise, it's just all you. So I don't know. I definitely have a, a really appreciated and enjoyed uh, the syndicates. I have to say, it's been really fun. John, what what advice would you give? Uh, we've heard about Jack's advice about about starting up, but. You with the, the family kind of side of it and the friends, what advice would you give to somebody who was interested in getting involved? Just on Tamasol's thing there, I think it's it's very similar to playing team sports and being like a, a sport on your own, like an athlete or something on your own. You you obviously when you're when you're in a singular sport and you're doing it on your own, you're you get enjoyment out of it, but with teammates and stuff, it can be it can be that much more special. I think for me, obviously Jack made some good points there. I think for me having someone you trust, um, whether that be the, the head of the syndicate, whether that be your trainer or whoever that is, and, or even someone buying horses, that that's the main thing. Like, I love going to sales, and I love watching them, but I wouldn't buy one. <laughs> I wouldn't be brave enough to put my hand up um, in terms of like, let the experts do it and um, people that are born into it, the people who are watching and dealing with horses every single day, they're there for a reason and they're, they're experts at their job for a reason. Um, so get someone you trust, get a trainer you trust and, and, and back them. Um, I think that's the main thing. Don't, don't go out alone and think you can do it by yourself, especially if you're like me and you, you just have enough to bluff your way through. So um, I think that would be the main thing. Just get people that you trust and, and sur surround yourself with those people. Yeah, H I mean, the H HRI have obviously a great list of all the bloodstock agents um, going straight to a trainer. If it's a particular trainer that you want to get involved, that's another good way of doing it. Um, because you can, they, can, they can actually, they may have the horse, they could source the horse. Um, 
I've, you know, there's a lot of bloodstock Asians go back a long time in my family as well, but there are, you know, there's a great list of bloodstock Asians and all can be checked and tested. And you can talk to, like, to Aidan and to Amber, really, they can set you straight and set you on the right road too. Uh, Jack, is there anything you'd like to, to add any advice from, from your many experiences so far? Well, look, you can always just come down to the Goss Orby sale uh, next week at Doncaster. You can just buy a horse off us. It makes it very simple. A, a horse um, but, or us. Or us yeah. um, <laughs> but, um, I suppose, I suppose, you know, but it's a, maybe a more expensive hotel. You know, maybe you just want something to bargain basement to come to Goss. Uh, so close, but no, no, no. In all seriousness, uh, you know, I, I just think um, HRI are, are doing these webinars for a reason. And, and what they're doing is saying to people, we, this is an open house. This get involved come on down um, and you know there's so many different ways be it, be it your local trainer um or as we talked about a bloodstock agent or you know um you could have a friend that you i'm sure a lot of people have friends that are very talented at picking out horses it's not they don't just have to be a formal bloodstock agent it's that relationship of trust and um from there great things can grow uh, please god Okay, well, thank you to all of you. It's been really enjoyable. I've le learned so much already. I think I'm, I might have to join a few syndicates myself now, but thanks for, for all of your, your words of wisdom and your advice on your experiences. Cheers. Thanks, Salim. Thanks a million. Guys, good luck. <laughs>